You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, got another Black Series figure review for you today. It is Momor Nadon, or as I like to call him, He Who Hath Hammer in Lieu of Head. Um, this is number seven from A New Hope. He comes in this sort of nice, deep, deluxe, deluxe box. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like they could have put this in a normal box, but I understand why they didn't. They want to have his head sort of facing forward. They... And I don't know if it would have looked all that good in a regular box with the head sort of twisted to the side a little bit. I think this is the way to go. It works out fine. I've got the uh, the picture on the side. Looks good. Nice picture of him on the back. A little bio there. You can have a have a quick read of if you if you so choose. If anyone wants to know all the rubbish on the bottom. Can do that. Not really a lot else to talk about with the packaging. So, I don't know, I've been looking forward to this guy. He's just sort of appeared here at uh, Zing Pop Culture here in Australia. Being a fan channel exclusive, um, weren't able to get this guy through through Kessel Run here in Collectibles. So, uh, yeah, had to resort to, to EB Games slash Zing Pop Culture to grab this guy. So, without further ado, let's bust him open and have a look. All right, folks, here is Momor Nadon. What an absolutely fantastic looking action figure. Um, yeah, I want to say it, say it and say, yeah, this is uh, yeah, 100% deserving of Deluxe now that I've got him out of the packaging. He's, he's just, he's a big figure. He's, you know, all new tooling. There's a lot of work that's gone into this guy to get him out. Um, I'm excited to see the follow-up in the vintage collection. Uh, maybe later this year, if not early 2025. I know he's pipelined. I don't know if they've revealed the figure yet. I I don't recall, I don't think they have, um, but yeah, I'm super, super stoked with this guy, I just, you know, I've got a, I've got a real sort of soft spot for the wacky, wild, wonderful world of Star Wars, and that's the aliens, that's the diverse life, life forms, um, and obviously, honestly, it was the cantina that's really sort of captured that for me, so being able to get a few more goons for the cantina in, in Black Series is awesome, um, I know we're getting the, uh, the big Haslab Cantina in the Vintage Collection, which is fantastic, but, you know, to get some of those characters in Black Series is, is equally as important. Um, don't need don't need them all. Um, just just a few would be would be cool. Hammerhead, n no exception. Um, he does come with, you know, a blaster rifle, just an E11. Um, yeah, I guess they just wanted to give him a weapon, which is which is fine. Um, you know, quite would have. I would have. Wouldn't have minded the. Uh, I think he came with a staff in one of the figures. I don't have that. I've got the two thousand six one, which I'll compare him with, which I think was the last time they got a hammerhead. I think even he may have gotten a a slight re-release, or whether or not I picked this guy up loose without the staff. I can't remember. But yeah, just just an option to give him a weapon. Um, but then we also get these three drinking cups. Now these have been seen before with uh, Bib Fortuna. So I like little scene fillers like this. It's, it's just cool to have, you know, if you've got a little a little table. I know Black Series only got that sort of quarter bar piece, which is something I never added. But, you know, if you've just got that as a little diorama piece, you can put some of these cups on there. Um, so I'll probably end up having him, you know, holding one of these cups. Or he could be double fisting. That's what we... That's what we say when you're handling a couple of drinks at a time. Because why would you go back to the bar for one when you can carry two? All right, let's get a look at this guy. I'm just going to move that table back a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Look at that face. That's just so good. Just looking at all the, the sculpting, like the, the texture of his skin. And the weathering and it sort of... That sort of wash that sort of sit, sat in there. And there's one of his mouths on the side there. Really nice stuff. I'm not sure how much they've reused from Doc Ondar, if any. Um, I don't have that figure. I'd definitely love to get a hold of Doc Ondar at one stage. Um, 
But yeah, I assume there's probably some used parts, but again, I haven't seen that figure or held that figure, so I'm not sure exactly what they've done, if any. So if you're in the comments, drop, drop us a note, note and let me know. But yeah, I love the mouths on the on the side of his head there. With the sort of hooded scarf there. I just love the shape of the head. It's just so wacky and wild. It's just, I don't know. He's almost, almost like a snail, isn't he? Like he's almost, if you chuck a shell on the top there, he almost looks like a snail. You know, say that's a, a shell. You put a shell there, he looks like a snail. I wonder why he didn't get called like slug head or something like that. Obviously hammerhead being the, the shape of the eyes resembling a hammerhead shark, but yeah, again, the, uh, the texture of the skin down the arms. The cracks sort of getting some of that weathering in there looks good. The outfit's pretty pretty standard, you know, it's a, not it's not standard, it's it's basic, it's almost like a Hessian sack. I like the sort of the ripped off sort of cuffs on the sleeves there, that looks good. I like the sort of the rope sort of wrapped around the waist, carrying some pouches, the little bag. That's his little utility. Utility belt and pouches. I like the gold buckle there. That's that's nice too. Down the legs, we've got the uh, ripped off calf calf bits there. The cuffs at the knees. I assume his pants are extremely elastic to be able to get him over this over his feet. I, fi I wondered the same about Admiral Akbar's arms. He's got these big lobster arms and you know quite tight sleeves. Yeah, there's some big, big hoof and feet. Unless he, uh, unless they sort of zip up. I don't know. There's no zippers in Star Wars, but you know what I mean. Again, that sort of skin detail there on the, on the legs. There's a little bit of the, the nail paint has gotten through onto the top of the foot there, but that's, yeah, I can look past that. That's easy. That looks good. Yeah, not a big problem. Maybe I'd just sort of scratch that off. Or I probably just won't worry about it. It's fine. There's some factory mass-produced things that's going to happen every now and then. Yeah, just blown away by the uh, the texture of the sculpt and the moulding there. It's really, really nice. The Yeah, like I said, the wash, sort of seeping it all the cracks, just giving it that sort of, you know, old, old sort of leathery look. You know, I see the big ET hands. Really nice. I do want to see how he holds the blaster while I've got it. So you could probably get that second finger. No, it's a little bit tight. A little bit tight. I'm sure he could. Yeah, it does sort of sit just in there. So if you wanted him to hold the blaster, but. Yeah, articulation-wise, um, he's got a big old ball joint in that neck. Yeah, that whole headpiece is just one big, one big headpiece. So that's move, a lot of movement there. A lot of good up and down range, side to side, tilts. So sort of just a big ball and socket. And the hood, the hood is sort of an individual piece too. So you can, uh, you know, move that sort of in and out. So that's nice. Now the ball hinges in the shoulders. It does have the butterfly joints in the arms there as well. The ball hinges in the, the elbows. We we'll swivel at the wrist. We've got an in and out hinge on this hand. We've got the swivel and an up and down hinge on that hand. There's a you know big ball and socket joint there in the torso as well. So that's nice. Let's have a look up his legs. Sorry, Hammerhead. I don't want to invade your privacy there. But yeah, just the ball and socket at the thighs. He does have the swivel legs there. So imagine these, these upper thigh pieces have been uh, slightly retooled. I can't pick from what. Whether they've been reused, I don't think so. But uh, nice joint at the knees. 
And then we got big hinges in the uh, in the feet and a rock in the ankles, and then a rocker joint in the feet too. So you get a give him a little bit of wide stance and a bit of action posing, action Ithorian. So yeah, got some pegs on the feet, but given the size of his feet, he's not going to have too much trouble standing up. His uh, center of gravity is quite nice, and the feet give it a balance. But for the sake of it, we do have a Kessler Run stand here, prototype, black. We just sort of did a small run of black ones just to sort of see how they come out. But we tried them in a uh, in a silk. So yeah, it is. A, it, Fits in there nicely. It's a bit snug, and that's just the nature of the peg. But and that is broken off in there, so I'm gonna have to get a little drill. That's all right. That's not a big deal. I'll fix that up nice and easy. Yeah, it was probably just a little bit too tight, and I probably yeah, probably shouldn't have forced it. But anyway, I want to do a little side by side comparison to the Stormtrooper. As you can see, he's a little bit taller. A little bit taller than the Stormtrooper. And then we'll get a side-by-side -by, -side by his 2006 counterpart. Which I think was the Saga collection. Or original trilogy collection. So you have Mr. Momor Needon. Happy to have him in the collection for sure. Hope you get yours soon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again very, very soon. Till then, may the force be with you always.